Well, if you're out there with a handful of teenagers, particularly boys, and you're just looking for a shoulder to cry on or a couple of ideas, people who've shared your experiences or are currently sharing them, stick around. Well, well, welcome back. Hey, it's Scott Christopher with uh, my wife, Liz. I'm not gonna call her Liz Christopher. I don't, don't, don't put Liz Christopher right there. It's just, let's just put Liz for lack of a better word. She'll be like Prince or Madonna or Fabian. Do you remember Fabian? No. <laughs> we'll just call her Liz. But anyway, we're talking about how to handle teenage boys, adolescent boys. In another video, we talked about uh, younger boys, infant boys, elementary school boys. This is specifically about teenage boys. Why? Why would we talk about that? Because it's a whole new ball game. Baby. <laughs> Easy when they're little. <laughs> and Liz is very familiar with raising teenage boys because she has and has had teenage boys of her own. How many teenage boys have you had, Liz? Five. Five. Plus all their friends. And that's right. So literally a whole family of teenage boys. Oh, by the way, we have five sons, no daughters. So if you're looking on how to raise daughters, don't come go here. to another YouTube channel. Maybe we'll have to recommend someone. Anyway, uh, talking about teenage boys, raising teenage boys, what's the first thing that comes to mind when someone asks, give me a piece of advice on how to raise teenage boys? I mean, I think don't trust them. <laughs> I know that sounds bad, <laughs> but you know, no, I can that's remember, okay. you just have to be the parent. They may be teenagers, but you know, they can come, you can go find them late at night, alcohol in their breath. No, I didn't have anything to drink. I promise, I promise. Not that we've had that experience, but yeah. It's okay. It's long in the past. Uh, or pot, you know, or cigarette smoke or whatever, whatever. it may be. Yeah. yeah, they will look you in the eyes and, swear and tell and you down. with a smile. Um, that's from an old song from Smoking the Bandit. Uh, and it finishes, there ain't nothing like the life of a Hollywood stuntman. That's not Smokey and the Bandit, that's um, Hooper. Did I lose you? Yes. Uh, I, I thought so. They will look you in the eyes and tell you with a smile anything you want to hear. Um, they will lie right to your face. Right. Is and what you're saying, so don't trust them. Yeah, especially as they get older and they tell you all the crap they did because now you no longer have any authority. The sneaking <laughs> out, the, all the, the cars, oh my gosh. So, and they will play you like a cheap fiddle. Oh, especially You don't me. believe me? How could you not? I can't believe. I, there's no trust and you raised me better than that. And I mean, they will use every line of persuasion that they can possibly conceive. And then a few years later, like you say, sitting around the Thanksgiving table where everyone's laughing about stupid things, they will tell you, oh, I was totally lying through my pants. I was drunk that night when I was telling you that. I, blah, blah. I had been with so-and-so. I stayed out. We sneaked out in the middle of the night a hundred times. What? What? Well, this is the first we're hearing of it because they would tell us something different. Right. But not that they were bad boys. No. I mean, they've all been relatively great kids, but they're Agreed. kids and somebody has to be the parent. So to mitigate that, our house is where we want them to come. And yes, we have certain rules. There's internet rules, phones are turned in at night. Uh, there's rules when there's girls over, there's rules about dating age. Ours has always been, you can start dating when you're 16. Some of them have pushed the limit and said, well, you didn't say I couldn't make out before I was 16. I just can't <laughs> date at 16. So there's always, you gotta well, be very specific. I have to, I, but I must say in their defense, I mean, dating and making out are two completely different things. I mean, you don't have to be on a date to make out. And all of our boys, probably every single one of them, probably kissed girls before they were of dating oh, age. for sure, yeah, well, all and, of them. And so if you, if you expect them to even attempt to keep one of your rules, I guess one bit of advice is, is be extremely clear and specific. That's one lesson that you could learn from us if you're in this position is include things like, we don't want you having a girlfriend until a certain age or expressing yourself physically with that girl before a certain age. But I think with teenagers, especially, if you wanna be the house that people come to so you can keep track of your yeah. kids, you have to have food and you have to love those kids. Yeah. 
and love your own but so many times the kids will come back to our house if our son's away traveling whatever they will come visit me because we have that bond. And I just think it's really important for these kids to know how much you care about them. They have a safe place to come. And then your children will want to be at your house more too because their kid, their friends want to be here. That's right. It, it may be a little costly because I know as the kind of the main breadwinner in our family, you know, when I see, I come into the kitchen and I see nine people I don't know going through my cupboards. We're in the kitchen right now, by the way. That's why I'm looking around. You know, or going through the jugging out of the whatever. My initial response is just get the hell out of our, you know, or whatever. And then I have to pull it in and go, wait a minute. Yeah, totally we're, we're, fine. we're thrilled that your friends are here, that they feel comfortable enough. It's just stuff. It can be replaced. I can get a third job to... <laughs> To pay for it all. I mean, truly, and, and to have a balance where maybe I'm a little more of an ogre, yeah. but that also creates a sense of, uh, of, of not discipline necessary, but of respect. Look, this right. is still someone's house, and there's still a tall guy who can look awfully mean when he wants, even when, you know, oh, they totally so-and-so's mom of. is beautiful and fun and really sweet. Now, and she also says someone has to be the parent. And I think that's huge too with teenagers is that we love them and when we're their friends, but you can never forget that you're a, a parent, you're a parent or you're their parent, but you are a person of authority that requires respect and has certain rules, but won't necessarily bring yourself, you bring yourself down to their level or bring them up to yours, but don't be their best friend, right? right. right? But I think... Like, I don't know how I would do it if I didn't have a husband. Like, these single moms out there raising boys alone. Amazing. I think that's extremely difficult to do, especially in the teenage years. I was raised by a single divorced mom, yeah, alone. And look what happened. See, I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I don't like the sound of it. Another thing I would consider, and this is what we do, uh, we drink out of jars like a bunch of hicks. And you know why? Because you can get a lot more fluid into one of these. Kerr. Kerr, Mason, or Bell? Just, just saying. I don't know how to respond. What about things like driving? Oh. <laughs> it's... I knew that would... Uh, it's like the worst. I, I've never hated anything more in my job as a parent than teenage. Getting that permit, thinking they can drive. And whether you think... I know he thinks he's the best driver in the world. He literally does. You do. You think you I do. don't think I'm the best, but I can't imagine anyone on a consumer level, like regular, user-friendly, just a normal, not Jackie Stewart or whatever. Boy, that's a dated reference. But I mean, just a regular person. There's no one better than me. I've never said that yeah. in my life. I'm just trying to defend what but, she said because it seems so silly. In this home, I... Okay, but would you rather have taught them to drive or oh, me? So that's the thing. Yeah. She wouldn't go out but and do like the... Like our youngest, you have traumatized... He says, I drive so much better with you, Mom, because Dad yells. And then our oldest son, or not Just trying our oldest, to keep them alive. But is trying to tell the youngest, just drive with Dad. After you've done that, you can drive with any distraction. Exactly. That's what he told him. And I purposely teach them to drive that way. Mm. I am not... Hey, You're I'm in the car with them. I don't want to drive. I won't drive with you. I can't make it out of the garage without you going... Oh, oh, oh. You should see. She's so close to the stuff. Oh. Because okay. he purposely so, parks my car in the most asinine position so nobody can get out of the garage. I'm merely pulls maximizing in. the space in the garage. This has You're an efficiency to expert. do with teenage boys, Listen. by the way. Yes, but it does. They need to learn from someone. So if you are a single parent, be hire the... Hire him to teach my your mom kids always to drive, you... and they will be terrified and never <laughs> want to drive again unless they drive with me. My point is, is if you're trying to handle teenagers, the best way to handle them when you're teaching them to drive is to not go mamby-pamby on them. If, listen, if they're doing something that could endanger them or someone else, they have to know about it immediately. You can't wait and write it off a list later. I mean, you can, and I probably should have. I just, I just think thought it of that. Just a lot now. of stress. My point yeah. is, is that if you're raising, we're done. We're done with teaching them to drive. Right. Hallelujah. Our last one is an official. Driver. Now she talks. I told you there'd be something that would get her talking. If you want to learn more about how to handle teenage boys, 
watch more of these videos because we'll certainly have more of them uh, that we talk about because that's really sort of the foundation of our family, our teenage boys. You know, for the longest time, I remember thinking when they were little, oh, I can't wait till they're older. They're so hard when they're little. But once they become teenagers, you pine for the days that it's just poopy diapers and vomit on your shirt. That's nothing. And we'll talk about that in an upcoming video. So stay with us and... Um... Good night. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> hopefully you got a chance to see how a real couple reacts when one of them is attacked about their driving habits. <laughs> and hopefully that was useful to you. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for joining us. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe, tell a friend, share, copy, paste, and post it on some other thing and let people know that this is the place to find out about uh, parenting tips from a couple of parents who need more tips. To be honest.